Hi everyone, my name is Tanil and I am the Community Care Coordinator at Hospice Simcoe. Um, I am doing my best to flatten the curve. I'm working from home, but self-isolating, doing the social distancing. So I thought this might be a great opportunity to really share some ideas about creating legacy projects while at home. I know many of you are probably at home as well with family or friends. Um, and again, practicing that social distancing and self-isolation. So this might be the perfect opportunity or time to start doing some of these activities. So what is legacy work? It is really taking the time to create something that um, from you for people that you love and care about. It can be something small. It can be something big. It is whatever you want it to be. It can be done at any time. So generally, um, through work we encourage it from diagnosis on but really it's something that can be done at any point in your life um, you know people do it from childhood to adulthood um, it, there's tons of opportunities to do it throughout your life we can all do it and it also can be given at any time so we can give legacy projects to our loved ones before death or after death it very much serves as a life review so it's a great opportunity to do some self-reflection and it can be a conversation or it can be a physical keepsake so uh, throughout this short presentation, I'll share some examples of these physical keepsakes. So some benefits of legacy work. So it really gives you the opportunity to re reflect. Again, look back on your life, do a life review, make meaning. It gives you autonomy. So you can decide what you want to do, where you want to do it, who you want to give it to, how deep you want to go. You are behind the driver's seat and have the autonomy to choose what you're going to do in regards to your legacy work. It encourages communication and may strengthen relationships. If you're at home with someone and they are helping you with your legacy project, um, that really can encourage conversation. They'll hear your stories. Hopefully they learn something from you as well. And you can feel this deep connection when people are sharing that type of information with you. And it can also start the bereavement process for individuals who are involved as well. So just a couple examples of things that I thought might be easier to do uh, within the home. So the first being journaling. Many of us journal already, whether it be on a daily or weekly or monthly or kind of sporadically. Um, so we can continue to do that and that journal can serve as a legacy project or we can create a journal specifically with the purpose of legacy. So really journaling is whatever you want it to be. It's the gateway to recording life, experiencing all manner of emotions and uncovering parts of yourself you never thought existed. Again, it's an opportunity for self-reflection. And it is very, very personal and unique. Nobody has the same story as you. No one's documenting the same story as you. It, um, you can go as deep as you want to go with it. You can write about things like your identity, your childhood. You can also talk about things from your childhood that maybe um, now you're doing your adulthood or, or the process of going from a child to an adult, things that you've learned along the way. You can talk about family traditions. Maybe there was something that was done on Easter that you just loved or birthdays or first year of spring or, or, you know, maybe once in a while you had certain family dinners that just meant a lot to you. You can share all of those types of things within your journal as well. Sometimes it can be overwhelming or um, intimidating to open a journal with a hundred blank pages. So occasionally it, it's, if you're having issues getting your story going, it's beneficial to have some prompt questions. So I wanted to share a few with you. However, I have lots more. So if you're needing some additional support, you can always get a hold of me and I can give you some additional questions. Um, here are some examples though. So what were some of your nicknames growing up and why were they your nicknames? Is there a funny story there? Um, is there something that happened that made you have that nickname? Were you named after someone? Maybe a grandma or great grandparent or aunt or uncle or family friend? Maybe a celebrity or a famous you know, musician. Um, is there someone that you are named after and who is that person? Do you know the meaning of your family name? What characteristics did you get from your parents and what did you pass on to your kids? Were your parents you know, hard workers? Were they very much um, within their community? Did they help their neighbors? Do you do that now? What was an honor or award you received? So something that you're proud of or were proud of. What is your most cherished family tradition? Again, maybe there's something that happened in your household that you now do with your family because it meant so much to you growing up. 
what would you like your family to most remember about you? That's a, a difficult question and it's a deep one. So again, you can go as deep as you want to go with that. Another example of something that you can do while at home and really all you need is a pen and a piece of paper, unless you want to do it auto, audio, um, but generally letter writing is done written and it's just an exchange of written or printed messages. You can decide who you want to give your letters to, when you want the letters to go to them. It's really up to you. It can be done for family members, friends, coworkers, community members. It can go to organizations. Really, again, can go to anyone that you choose. And it can be given at any time. So it can be given um, before the death or after the death, whatever you choose. Some people also decide to do single letters. So, you know, one letter for daughter, one letter for mom, one letter for dad, or people decide to do multiple letters for multiple events. So um, somebody can decide to do a letter for them uh, when their daughter gets married or when they turn 18 or a specific event, maybe a day that they're just needing extra encouragement or a day that they go to college. So you can do that as well. And as I mentioned, it can be written or audio. You can do audio recordings through your phone or camera. Um, it, it's pretty easy to do these days, but generally it is through, uh, through writing. Another unique way of leaving a legacy is through artwork. So artwork that represents you is really meaningful. And again, it's personal and unique. So nobody will have the same vision board or nobody will have that exact same art piece. So there is a, a lot of uniqueness to that. A couple examples that I thought might be easy to do in the home. Um, fingerprint trees. So the bottom right there is an example of a fingerprint tree. All you need is a, a tree, a picture of a tree. You can get them offline and you need some ink. You just put your finger in ink and place your finger on that tree. Some individuals choose to do it at the roots if they were the roots of the family. Sometimes people have hearts within their trees and they'll put that person's fingerprint within the heart as well. You can then encourage your family members or community to add their fingerprints onto the tree as well. You can photocopy this and frame them and multiple people can get it as well. And it's also neat because the uniqueness of a fingerprint. Again, nobody has the same fingerprint as you, so this is a pretty unique um, personal project to do. You can do a vision or a legacy board. So the other photo I have is of a vision board. So you, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can create vision boards for other individuals within your life, or you could create a legacy board for yourself. So this could include just cutting out well, photos from magazines or articles that represent you and your past. It could be past jobs, it could be past trips, it could be things that you've learned along the way, and then you put them as a collage on one big uh, poster. Handprints. Again, uniqueness of a handprint, all you need is ink or paint. A lot of kids love doing this activity too. So if you have kids in your life, this might be a great opportunity to have their handprints and your handprints on one, on one um, piece of paper together. And if you're really feeling eager, you could do a portrait of yourself. Again, I, I don't know what everyone's abilities or um, willingness to do artwork is. I know I wouldn't be able to do a portrait of myself, but some people might be able to, and, and that is a pretty unique art um, legacy piece as well. Some other ideas. So pillowcases. So perhaps there are certain pieces of clothing that mean a lot to you, whether it be pajamas or a wedding dress or suit. Um, you can take that fabric and sew together into a pillowcase. So there's that. Um, I have conversation on here because conversation and stories get passed along from generation to generation to generation. And sometimes that itself is the legacy piece. It's not necessarily the keepsake, it's that story that people are remembering and people are talking about at their family traditions or, uh, so I just encourage the conversations to happen as well. Video audio recordings. So again, this can be done through cell phones or cameras. Um, there are a, different, a couple different things out there on the web that can assist with this as well. Fingerprints. So we talked about the uh, fingerprint tree, but there are other activities you can do with your fingerprint as well. And again, you can find those online, but really even just having a piece of paper with your fingerprint on it is um, a huge legacy piece because of the uniqueness of, of your fingerprint. 
a recipe book. So sometimes people choose their favorite recipes or recipes that were passed on from generation to generation. They put it in one book together and that book becomes a legacy piece for a family. So that's an opportunity. You could work on that when you're in the comfort of your own home as well. Photo albums. I know we're moving away a little bit from the actual printed photos, but if you are still one of those individuals, you can create a photo album. You can also create photo albums online and create a book from them if you have more, um, you know, saved photos on a computer versus printed photos. There is that opportunity as well. And then one unique idea is a playlist. So I think we all have songs that remind us of people or songs that bring us back to a certain time in our life. We can put those all together as a playlist to give to our loved ones. I would encourage that if you do a playlist, maybe there's a little bit of a story around why you chose those songs, but it is a great way to represent an individual. I wanted to end with just a short YouTube video about the importance of leaving a link. <laughs> Today, I'm going to tell you about my shoes. About five years ago, my mother took me out shoe shopping. She was a shoe addict. I was not. So she came up to me with these really pink, high-heeled shoes, and I told her, no, they're not for me, because shoes are for walking, right? No, my child, she said. Some shoes are for having. And these are, so I'm buying these for you, whether you will wear them or not, they're yours. So she did. And why am I telling you this? Because I know this story and you don't. You just see pink shoes. And I see the last present my mother ever bought for me. I see the lights in her eyes when she paid for them and handed me over the box. So. This is not about my shoes. This is about a legacy, about leaving stories for when you're not around to tell them anymore. So, this is a picture of me and my mom. It's a selfie before they were called selfies. <laughs> and we're sitting at the airport waiting for a plane to take us to our last family holiday. It's taken two weeks after she bought me these shoes. And you might see smiling women in the camera. I see something different. I see myself three months pregnant with my first child, and I see my mother with a death sentence called very aggressive tumor, not treatable. We knew this was going to be our last holiday, and we knew I was going to be a mom while losing my own mom. So two months after this picture was taken, I wore these shoes to our cremation with proud. This is a picture of my father <laughs> at a to me unknown location with an unknown person wearing remarkable clothes. And I wish I could tell you more about this picture, but I can't. I just don't know the story behind this, and there are a lot of stories I don't know about. So. My father died a year before my mother did, and a similar tumor killed him. Age 26, I became an orphan, and that was something I didn't expect, and it happened really fast, and there I was with all these pictures and no stories. There were sitting a lot of strangers under our Christmas trees. So I did not only lose my parents, I lost their stories as well. And that's difficult, because I miss essential stuff. I miss my parents, obviously, and I miss that we cannot make new memories. But I also miss answers to questions I never knew I would have about being a parent myself, for example. So I'm not complaining, because the legacy I did get <laughs> is pretty remarkable and filled with beautiful memories. It's just the gaps that I'm sad about. Because pictures don't tell us thousands of words. They actually don't tell us anything, unless you know the stories. So during this last vacation, 
my mother said her goodbye. She, she said to me, I'm not going to leave you any last lessons or any letters. I have faith in the fact that I taught you enough during your life to live the rest. She told me, you're brave, you're smart, you will survive. And though I understood why she had to say that, I could scream at her. How could she think this? I still needed her so bad. But I went on. And with this experience, I tried to collect my legacy of my life for my daughter. She's four years old now. <laughs> and this may sound like I'm living with death in the back of my head, but I'm not. I'm living a pretty happy life and I get caught up with everyday, everyday stuff like all of you. I just sit down every once in a while and try to collect my memories and my experiences and put them in words, in little stories. So she will know why she should never ever throw these shoes away and why this picture of me and my mom at the airport is so important to me. So she will know how proud I am of her and that she is the love of my life. Because she is entitled to that. She's entitled to a rich legacy and everyone is. So okay, I know I can never be conclusive. I can never leave everything behind. But I also know that it's the little things that count. It's the story on the back of a picture. It's every spoken word, every voice recording. Everything is important. Everything counts. So I'm asking you to think about your legacy that you are leaving for those who will miss you. And by doing that, you will find that there are missing pieces in your life as well. And go get them. <laughs> Do it because you are entitled to a rich legacy and you can only leave one if you know what it is. So are there questions you never ask? Go ask it. Find your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your lovers. Collect it. Because these pink shoes are part of my legacy and I'm re really working hard to fill in the gaps for my daughter so she doesn't have to experience what I did. And I'm asking you, what are your pink shoes? What is it you want to leave behind when you're not around anymore to the ones you love? Thank you.